Hello there, Sir from 17 once again. This is my Dark Souls 3 beta blind playthrough thing, and this is the fourth sequence. So this statue looks so much like Artorias, dude. There is so many motifs in this entire thing, all about that. It's kind of crazy. Um, so many little bit pieces of iconography and, and items and effigies and just awesome stuff. And it makes me happy because it makes me feel like the story of the game is going to be definitely going into some of the most interesting aspects of the Dark Souls lore. Because for me, I've never been the biggest fan of... I don't watch lore videos, I never have. Uh, well, that's a lie. I watched Epic Nambro do it because when he did it, I really felt like something awesome was happening. I felt like it was just somebody doing something that they, they were really passionate about and that they did really well and they weren't doing it for any other reason than because they really liked Dark Souls. And then all this other soul fucking law bullshit that, that sprung up after Epic Nambro did his thing. Every single one of them, to me, looks like a massive cash grab. It looks like those people that make, here's 10 things you didn't know about syphilis, or, or all that bullshit, like, 10 things you need to know, insert generic number of generic things that generically need to be generic, and everybody clicks on them and watches them. And, like, everybody who followed him and did that stuff, like, except for maybe that Quilag girl, I think she she was doing it back when he started, and, and, and it weren't about, you know, views or, or all that kind of stuff. It was just about this collective love of the game. And then all the stuff, nah. Every video you fucking click on is somebody talking about, well, well maybe the beard of Zeus is somehow ingratiated in Menace's foreskin. Like, no. No, none of this. And it, and it's become this massive thing all of its own. And, and it's huge on YouTube and people love it. And everybody gets together and, and like speculates and stuff and does the whole law thing. And like, I just, I just don't like it. I never have. I appreciate that other people do and that's amazing. But for me, I want the story in the game the way it is and for me to draw my own conclusions I don't really want to have this collective speculation where everybody then preaches as if it's fact when it's not and that was the thing I always respected about about Marcus was the fact that it was always prefaced by saying this is just me this is just what I think it was never this is fact this is Miyazaki's dick trimmings like it was just you know this is what I think it could mean, because I think this is cool and it's interesting. And it was just a guy running with his imagination, but it's so sycophantic now and zealous that you get these people that are like, <laughs> and they think it's fact, and they push it like it's fact. And if you're a person who's not interested in law, it's like you've just said soul games are shitty. And you, like, it's nothing to do with that. It's just I don't want a bunch of people making shit up and pushing it on me like it's in the game when it isn't. It's you interpolating bits of information, and I say bits of information because half of this is like one fucking surname on a coin description. Like, it's so vague, it's unbelievable. But it's, it gets massive coverage, and people love it. But I was never interested, story-wise, about all the external elements that I had no control over. Like, I think Lloyd's is a cool character just because he has all these great these great tools and, and everything talks about him and they, they mention him as is it the old father Lloyd a little bit like Odin is the old father and, and I think that's just a, a cool idea so it'd be cool to find out about him but I don't really care about all these other places that are fleetingly mentioned unless we're gonna go there like I couldn't give a shit about Vinheim unless we're gonna go to Vinheim because all I know is that there's that one fucking dude who makes your weapons from Vinheim and I just got murdered always fun to see but I feel like this game is going to be going into the cool stuff, or what I think is the cool stuff. The Knights of Gwyn, you know, those dudes. Because I just think that they were always the most interesting aspect of it. You have this this king, this ruler, who falls from grace. And it's it's just mirroring King Alant from Demon Souls. It's this, like, cyclical story of Souls games. This just this, It's almost this bittersweet tragedy of you have this person who is who wants to do good but somewhere along the lines through his own covetous nature and his humanity because that's what it is it's the flaws of his humanity he becomes the bad guy and i always find that to be really interesting and god bless the people that followed him into hell because that's exactly what they did and, and of course they became you know the black knights and things and i just i love this idea of of holding on to something too hard with good intentions, but crushing it. And I think it's a fantastic hook for a narrative. 
and the Souls games never really went into it, you know, they never gave me the, the resolution that I was looking for. <laughs> they just don't. And it stems from, you know, the, the way Miyazaki used to read things when he was younger, and he didn't really understand what he was reading because I think the, the, the level of his reading skills at the times, you know, made it almost like he had to guess what they were trying to say. And for him, he had a ton of fun doing that, and that's what influenced his storytelling, that's what makes it so unique. But is it the most overrated thing on the planet? I fucking think it is. So many people, like, it's that Bible code thing where you can't ever have anything now because it's all symbolic, it all has meaning, it's all a reference, it's all, you know, a, a nod and a wink to something else. You can't just have something because it's all connected. It's all the fucking Illuminati. And it's that stupidity that, that really winds me up when, like, they're analysing bricks and shit, the spacings of bricks, yes. Maybe it's just a shortcut because the interns were level designing that day. Like, you know, not everything has a unique, you know. When you hear the sound of hoofs, think horses, don't think zebras, guys. It's just, it's just that thing that I find really, really weird. But in the last video I was talking about something, and I said I was going to continue it in this one, and I can't remember what I was talking about. Which is, I do apologise, guys, it happens. I do like this guy, although he's way too tall. Why are you so tall? So there is one hold all from Dark Souls 2, which is a bad thing, I think. That is, when you run out of stamina, you get the stamina penalty from Dark Souls 2 where you can't run. And I have no idea why it's in the game, because if you remember Bloodborne, it didn't do it. However, once again, I think if you roll midway up the stamina regen, you will be able to run then, because it kind of cancels it out. That was a technique you could do in Dark Souls 2. But... Yeah, I, I don't like the stamina penalty at all. And in this game, you get penalised for stamina massively. Stamina is going to be the most important statistic in the entire game. Green Blossoms are going to be lifesavers because it's just the punishers on stamina are so high. It really is crazy. Like, if you're the person who likes to roll a lot and fake with rolls, you're going to get instantly crit by somebody who exploits it, who chases you down, waits for you to land, and then hits your shield. And if you block, it knocks your shield away, and he crits you. And if his build is set to, you know, really good crits, you're dead. And especially if he's using the the resin repost. Because then it adds a whole bunch of buff damage to it, and with the way that the buffs work now, there's really not that much of a great opportunity to use them outside of C attack, just, like, if anybody telegraphs an attack... Oh, here's his walk move. His crazy uh, call from beyond slash holy light firestorm thing. Very, very strange. But if you're wondering what I'm doing here, guys, I'm just kind of trying to see what this dude can do. I'm hitting him, seeing, you know, if I can break his poise, seeing what I can do with him. And then in a while, I'm going to learn that you can backstab him, and then it's going to make this fight very different. But this spell seems really fair, which I like. It could be super good against gankers too, because gankers don't give a shit, do they? They just want to be close to you, they want to be chopping at you. So if you do that, and they're all trying to chop at you, yeah, that's really tough to spin through. But do you see the life it takes off? I think that's really fair. In the grand scheme of things, real fair. But this guy's pattern, he generally does two attacks, and then he gives you an opening to attack him. Two attacks, opening to attack. Two attacks, opening to attack. He very rarely does one attack. When he does one attack, it will either be the magic or it will be the charge up to do the spin. When he charges the spin, you want to try and backstab him to interrupt him. It's the best way to deal with him. You might not see that in my blind run of this beta because I don't think I got that comfortable with him then. But in the in the preceding betas, I, I learned to really punish that enemy and, and mess him up. But I'm just kind of trying to find things to break here to see if I can find items. But one of the things that people have been criticising of this game as well is that the roll seems super fast. And it really isn't, guys. The speed of the roll is probably around the speed of the roll from Demon Souls. The thing that you're not seeing, that you really need to understand, is just how much recovery you have when it comes to pressing the roll. And just how much delay you have when it comes to going into the roll when you press evade. It feels a lot more weighty than it looks, let me tell you that much. And there are times when you wish it was Bloodborne, because Bloodborne had a faster evade. And I think it's going to work perfectly. I think they're probably going to smooth it out. And I don't think anybody should be too concerned about that. As much as the attacks, the attacks feel very Dark Soulsy. The only difference being is certain ones are a little quicker than you're used to, so it feels a little faster, but not by much. The one thing you're going to notice the most is the enemies. Every single enemy 
attacks faster than you. And uh, I've mentioned this before, I'm going to be mentioning it a lot. I just don't agree with it. They have a lot of flurries, they have really fast attacks, it's kind of stupid, but it's not as fast as Demon Souls. Because in Demon Souls there are certain enemies that you cannot you cannot parry on reaction, you have to predict. Anybody with a katana on that game, you cannot sight parry the katana's one handed R1, you can't do it. You have to run at him, anticipate it, then press it. It's just like PvP. And on this game so far, there has been nothing that I had to predict, except for maybe the the thief's lunge attack but even then you can kind of parry the moment he springs and you'll probably get it but i really like the way they've dressed the environment i love that these suits of armor and the poles are littering all the places because i always felt that dark souls was a little bit vacant at times i think demon souls did it way better but only really in Boletaria. Boletaria really looked like a scourge had been through that place. It looked like it was a war-torn, you know, capital. And I really appreciated that, the, just the atmosphere of that. And I think that this is really capturing it. And hopefully there'll be more of it. And that was one of the great things that Bloodborne did. It made a lot of environments feel dense. They weren't always crowded, but they felt like they were occupied. And I think that was great. So I've come back over to the, the knights here, as you can see, and I'm going to be trying to, to see what they can do, basically. Try and play with them a little bit. However, playing with this enemy is incredibly dangerous because they're very, very, very tricky. And I say they're very tricky. They're a boulder knight. They're a boulder knight, straight up. They attack very fast. They do good damage. They can stun lock you pretty good. And, you know, they're not going to fall for every backstab you try. But if you roll backstab them, there's really nothing you can do. Yeah, they literally are Boulder Knights, that's what they are. And I think I've already mentioned it, but I'll reiterate it. This is an enemy that will always run at you and do two quick attacks. He will only do the third attack if he hits normally. And if you try and get away, they're really good at punishing you. So right there, third attack, which you can punish with a backstab because it's really, really long-winded. And I'm going to try and chain him here, and he's going to hit me with a shield. If I had my shield up just then, he would not have hit me, but he would have, of course, taken off stamina. So, something to bear in mind. Here it comes again. There's the running attack. There's the second attack. Notice how there was no third attack? Because he didn't hit. And there's a parry. Some people are complaining about the parry noise. I have absolutely no idea why. I think it's amazing. I, I like the old parry sound. I hate the parry sound in Dark Souls 2. It sounds like you've just thumped like a wooden pillow on somebody. This game, just it sounds like you've just emptied a shotgun in them. It's ridiculous and I love it. This was me messing about with the altar trying to get something to happen. Because if you remember in Canehurst, you could bow before the woman and it enabled you to join her covenant. And if you didn't do that, I don't think you could. Um, I could be wrong though, it's been a while since I've joined that covenant. So I do that, nothing really happens. There's a couple bloodstains happening here. That guy's having a fight, he's using the Zvi, which is... Uh, it's not the Zvi, sorry, it is the great sword. But it is the Zvi, you'll get what I mean when you use it. It's a good weapon for that. If you hit a fully charged R2, I think you do about 200 damage. If you buff it, you'll of course do more. I didn't have to buff. So, there's the shield bash. Take it right on the chin. There's me swapping my weapon out for my fist to see what the fist does. It doesn't do bad damage in the grand scheme of things, but it's, you know, it's the fist. You can't seem to parry the, the shield bashes, so nothing new there. And these enemies really like to shield bash too. There seems to be a big emphasis on the hitting you with the shield. See that though? That was tons of attack then. I couldn't get away. Murdered me. And then he does his little, yes, I just shit on you. Now I'm going to reset to my default position. See you later. And there he goes. High Wall of Lothric. So the torch. You've not seen me use the torch too much. I really should. It's actually really good. I'm a big fan of the torch. It gives you really good stun lock potential. I should have experimented way more with it than I did, but I just kind of didn't. So we're back from this checkpoint. Practicing my parries on this guy, really enjoying how they feel. The, the attack on the axe when you parry that, it feels so weighty. Really, really deliberate. I thought when she screamed, everybody would get up, like all of the people praying, but it's just this like one guy that would have attacked you anyway. Seems to get it in on the action. So, hit him with a quick R2. Go for a parry. See that? Got like a weird iframe. Because that attack was way slower than I thought it was going to be. So was that one. 
But for, for a lot of the attacks, the moment you see them move is when you want to try and parry because some of them are very quick. Like that one there. The moment you saw him move, you wanted to put the parry out there and it would have landed. And that's what's cool about the game because a lot of people seem to think that parrying takes no skill which is ridiculous when you bear in mind that how much damage it does if it's not skillful. Like, just because you've learnt the timings and you've got good at it doesn't mean it didn't take skill. Like, I'll never understand that logic. Because if you fuck it up, you take damage. Like, <laughs> it seems a pretty binary thing to me. It rewards good timing. And that's all the game is. Like, and, and the people that go like, all you're doing is pressing one button and winning. Like, well, you're doing that anyway, you fucking idiot. That's what R1's called. Like, come on. There's no argument here. That's a fireball, and I'm in trouble. <laughs> Should have backstabbed him then. What was I doing? Getting hit by firebombs. <laughs> There's a lot of enemies here, too. You can climb up the back of the dragon, but you can't get on him, which is a little disappointing. And there's all his friends. I do like the dragons as well, and I have this theory with Souls games. If there's a dragon early on, it's probably going to be a good game. And the only game that's disproved this theory is Scholar of the First Sin, because they shoehorned a dragon in a place it should have never been, and it wasn't designed. So I think I should make an addendum. If you get attacked by a pre-programmed dragon attack early on, <laughs> it's going to be a good Souls game. Because if you remember, Dark Souls 2, the first dragon you came across was at the end of the game. <laughs> like, what the fuck is that? And I just, I don't understand why they did that. It's, it's like that James Bond thing. James Bond has to say, shaken or stirred or whatever with his martini, and even if he's taking the piss out of it like Daniel Craig did, he has to say it. Additionally, there has to be a, mo a moment where, you know, he says his name, because that's kind of his catchphrase, and then a moment where he seduces somebody, albeit maybe not in the most graceful way. And those are the James Bond moments. And then, of course, there has to be a moment where he, s he escapes death and it goes into a crazy awesome piece of music, which the new films that haven't really done too much, but the old ones used to always do it, because it was always another... Da -da 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 the Bond theme, which we've lost, which I miss. I fucking love that theme. And that's kind of the, 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 the notes you have to hit on those films. And in a Souls game, I feel there has to be, you know, like a Patcher's Betrayal kind of character. There has to be some kind of co-oping Sombro-esque character. And there has to be a dragon. That seems to be what it's about. Like, there is always those things. Why why did Dark Souls 2 save that for so long? I'll, I'll never understand that game. So here's me hitting this buddy. I got a bit sad as well when I was thinking about this dragon. Because it's obviously petrified or carbonized or something it's dead and the other one's sticking around and it makes me wonder was it its mate and i was thinking about that quest from from witcher 3 and it just makes you think like we're very mean to dragons in these games but we don't really know you know what their backstory is maybe they were helping orphans in their previous life and then we came along and fucked them up and a funny story too there's a moment in this playthrough where i'm gonna throw firebombs at the dragon and I'm going to learn that he can hit you in some pretty crazy spots. So, uh, it is not a safe spot to do not repeat the actions you're going to see in one of these videos. But, uh, we're just cruising around, going back through areas, picking up the greatsword again. Really like the greatsword. Super fun weapon. Only criticism is, you just don't really have the stamina to use it as effectively as I would like to use it. Because it takes off big stamina. So there's me kicking, doing an R2. See that? That one R2 took all my stamina. Then he poked me and it guard broke me. If that was PvP, I was probably dead if the guy was doing, you know, a powerful repost. Two-handing his Vi, buffing it, all that kind of stuff. He's been baiting the dragon. And also, depending on where you stand here, will depend on where the dragon sprays his fire. Try to parry an arrow then. I reckon you'll probably be able to do it with a specific shield. That would be cool. I'll never understand why they don't give the option to send arrows back to the person who cast them if you perfectly parry them. I think that would be amazing. I think it would be cool if you could get a magic shield that did the same. Because can you imagine somebody trying to dark bead you and you just parry it back into the face? That would be the ultimate, like, comeback moment. There it was. Mess around on the lower valley, the dragon does his fire. So the dragon fire is kind of really stupid. It doesn't do big damage like it used to, but it keeps you in this indefinite weird flinch where you can kind of move and you can kind of not. You can roll through it, but you're going to keep taking little bits of hits. It's, it's weird. The good news is, 
on your first pass, you can just run straight past the dragon and go through the door underneath him and he will not hit you because he can't. However, it takes me, I think, the second network test to figure that out. So, is this when I start throwing fire bombs at him? I think it might be. Yeah, this is it. So I try and throw a knife, and it doesn't work. So I'm thinking, fire bombs. There you go. And I get him. 17 damage. He's got a massive life bar. 17 damage. We're doing this, boys. And he turns around. I'm like, oh my god, really? Really? <laughs> and he starts doubting me. <laughs> and you can see the weird stunlock he does. Well, you can move, but it's weird. All I'm trying to do now is heal. I'm mashing heal. That is literally all I'm doing. And I just get out of it. Whew. So yeah, that is not a safe spot. Do not chuck stuff at him from there. Fun to know, though. I love that they've put stuff like that in. Because I'm the type of person who's going to try that. And that was designed to screw me over. So very happy with that particular sequence. I just use an ember by accident as well. But it gives me my life back. I'm like, oh yeah, I get higher life with that. I forgot about that. That was the guard break. Wonderful move. There was the Zvi. Should have two-handed it. Can I chain him? I didn't. There was poise or hyper armor, depending on what you want to call it. That was him. He should have killed me then. That was me going for a parry and just getting real messy. Oh, what am I doing? Please, thank you. But these enemies remind me of those knights from the Crown of the Sunken King, only they're not bullshit. Like, that enemy there, every time he kills you, it's your fault. And I love that. He doesn't do anything that I've seen that you can't do, except for the shield bash thing. But then, we haven't seen all the shields, so maybe you can do that. Like, he is perfect. He does exactly what he's meant to do. He's meant to put pressure on you, and he's meant to scare you. And that's what he does. Because he's way more aggressive, way more damage potential, just a tougher, trickier enemy than the standard, you know, ghoul thing that you kill. I think I'm going to find my shortcut in a minute, which uh, I'm going to upload a video of it, but I've put two videos together because I thought just this video on its own uh, wouldn't be all that great, even though essentially it is a skip. It saves about half a second and it's, you know, not the easiest thing to do every time, but I just love it because it's the kind of thing I love doing. It's like when I was playing Dark Souls 1, and I and I discovered if you ran in a circle on the elevator in Anor Londo, you could jump off it as it was lowering, and land on the railing, and you didn't have to go down the stairs, and you could skip that entire walking around and waiting bullshit. And I love stuff like that. It saves, what, 15 seconds, 10 seconds? Which is not a lot unless you're a world record speedrunner. But when you're impatient and you like doing cool jumps, it's just really fun. And I'm going to find it now, because I'm in the mindset of trying to, to do glitchy things. And I'm thinking, can I walk on this ledge? I, oh, I didn't do it, did I? Shit. I'm going to do it later on anyway. And if you remember, in the Dark Souls 2 beta, there was a cheeky ledge next to a staircase that you could walk along that led to Llewellyn's armor. And that's what inspired me to try and see if I could do things with it. And then I ended up finding a skip to get to the roof where the um, Las Plagas guy is. Or whatever his name is. Manus's dirty, tickly uncle. A couple of guys in here. Showing you a little bit more of the Zvi's moveset. I haven't shown the, the special feature yet, because I don't know how to use it at this point. All you do is you press you press L2, and then you press either R1 or R2, and he'll do this weird kind of parry-looking thing, and then he'll do a move. And I, I couldn't understand it, because the longsword goes into a stance, this one doesn't. So just that deviation can kind of confuse me. I just did full damage on him. That was fun. Combo's going to come out backstabbing. How much does this do? 39? 147. So that's quite a lot. And I buffed again by accident, I think. Well, maybe not. So watch. See that? Dead before he even transforms. Best way to deal with that enemy. He drops a Divine Blessing, which is not that rare on this particular network test. You end up picking up, I think, one to three of them. And then you can backstab these fellas and practice your stabbing. Which is a little unfair, because they're worshipping these things. And if you look at it, these people have turned into trees. Or poles, or something. It's weird. Like, at first I thought they were impaled. And then when you look at them, they've actually transformed. Or polymerized into weird, bony tree things. I, I, I have no idea. It's like they, they spent an eternity out in the sun, and they finally became a sunflower. It's really strange. 
Also, backstabbing and parrying on this roof occasionally can be a bit wonky. I have an invasion where I run up to a dude's back and uh, I can't backstab him. I just end up slashing him. And I don't know if it's the... Uh, I'm trying to do a reverse roll right now, if you're wondering what I'm doing. I was never that good at the reverse roll and I, I just... Not a big fan of the PlayStation 3 controller when it comes to doing that input. Pushing in the analog and like flicking things and... The analogs are in the wrong place. I like the 360s configuration. And everybody who likes the PlayStation controller says the opposite thing because it's entirely what you're comfortable with. Also, you, I think you can jump on that house. I was never able to do it, but there were signs on top of it, so some bugger did. Which I think is hilarious. I wonder if there's anything up there, but that jump, you must have to do it with the left analog stick. Because I'll never forget on Dark Souls 2, Lobo made a video really early on where he found a shortcut past the Shrine of Winter, but it could only be done with the left analog stick because you just couldn't do it pressing, double pressing the, the run button. Because you just, you didn't get the same kind of momentum. And I think it'll be the exact same for that. And you might be wondering, well, why don't you change it? I just can't do it, guys. I, I prefer the old school method. And I know it's inferior. It is inferior in every way, but I just, I can't not have it that way. I hate clicking analogs to do things. I just, I, I always have, I always will. This game has a really cool use of the analog where it's just a lock on and as lock on is important but you can also play this game without it. So I've got the, the Legion Scimitar on. I'm hoping you don't have to use both of them in the main game. I'm hoping there's like a single one and a double one or dual wielding works like it did in Dark Souls 1 but has all the functionality of Dark Souls 2 and then adds a whole new bunch of stuff for Dark Souls 3. That's me trying to parry. Really don't think you can parry this guy. I hope I'm wrong and I hope my timing was bad, but I really don't think you can. Additionally, enemies chase you now on this game for really, really far. They will come for you for some considerable range. That guy's got a super good running stab. Caught me out of it a lot. You can also attack through geometry, so if you're thinking that they're going to fix that, they won't. They never will. Like, I think it's a part of the engine. If you want the, the soul controls, you're going to have to put up with the bullshit like that. So see what I mean? Two hits and then he stops, then you can backstab him. As soon as I learnt that, this enemy became a joke. You can chain stab him too. Like that. I was a little slow on it, but it still worked. So just get into position and immediately do him. And there you go. Really, really easy enemy. Praise the sun. Oh, I forget the name of that guy. The biggest douche in the universe. What is his name? I'm not a douche! <laughs> oh, South Park. I really should watch the new episode, but I thought the new season so far has been really bad. Like, it's been so American and topical that I just haven't been able to find it that funny because I don't, I'm not American. You know, I don't have your culture in my face all the time. So it's unfortunate that it has been so very specific so far on everything. Like, I don't know if this social justice warriors thing is a big thing in America. But that's me trying to use the parry on this, even though it's not a parry. Like, of course, I've become aware of it on the internet, that particular thread. But all the other stuff that they've been doing, like, I don't even know what that chain is that they're making jokes at that they built next to Kenny's house. I think, I can't even remember the fucking name of it. It's like, Go Go Pogo Bogo. For hipsters. The new place for cool music and, and great food. And, and it keeps showing you all this real-world footage. And it's probably really funny if you know what's happening, but I'm just like... I don't even know what that is, and I, I don't have that kind of, you know, gentrification happening in my area. Like, we barely have a KFC. We would love a pretentious hipster bar thing. You know, all we have is cows and fields. Which used to be what South Park had, but, you know, they don't have that anymore, because apparently they're getting all repopulated. With weird shit. But a lot of this footage is not really stuff I would normally upload, because it's just me experimenting. It's me playing with enemies, you know finding out how you can stab them, swapping between the weapons and stuff. But it's Dark Souls 3 and it's, you know, it's you haven't had a chance to play it, so maybe you want to see this. You know, maybe this is, you know, you, you're killing for this. And I, and I hope that this helps give you some inclination as to, you know, what you can do. Here's me trying to do that weird thing again. I just can't do it. I'm like, why is this not working? And in my defense, it does kind of look like the parry, doesn't it, from Dark Souls 2? But it's not. It's nothing like it. And I never clicked, I never thought, like, why don't you just try and, you know, press a modifier button, Chris? Never thought. I'm gonna parry him. That was a fast attack. I still think you could have reacted to it, though. That was a rolling R2 charge. 
you don't know, on this game you can roll and charge R2s. Do you know why that's the most powerful thing in it? You know when you come up against a good player and you know that they're trying to parry it because they can parry, they know the timings. You can roll forward, super telegraph it, so they just do a standard roll parry. And instead of pressing R1, you charge R2. So when you land, they do the parry, and you hit them for real big damage. And in, in that situation, when you hit them with that, if you've got enough stamina, jump attack. Because anybody who's been hit by a big hit is either going to try and roll backwards, or try and roll BS you. If they try to roll backstab you, you know, you might be in a spot of bother, but you can always try and roll back and backstab them. But if they try and roll backwards, the jump attack will catch them. And you'll have done two of the biggest hits in the game, on their life bar and that's going to completely change how people parry which I think is great because when you see somebody roll you're going to see PvP footage of me punishing a roll people punish my rolls like when you come up against somebody and they know you like to roll if you roll directly at somebody you're probably going to attack and the thing with it is if you throw a parry at and they don't attack they don't have enough time to get round your back and backstab you in this game so you're not going to be vulnerable if they choose to you know do some quick R1s, you're probably going to get fucked, but it's just, it's going to be really, really good, it's going to catch out so many people, and that's why I love the, this game so much at the moment, because there's so many features of it that are adding on the stuff that was in Dark Souls 1, and giving it that extra layer, because how many times did you feel like you wanted to do something when you were fighting an opponent, but you just, you didn't have enough options, like, a lot of the times it could have been your build, but just... Do you jump attack? Do you R1? Do you R2? Do you running attack? Do you roll attack? You know, once you've exhausted all those options, how did you mix it up? You really kind of couldn't, except for, you know, trying to parry and stuff. So, this really feels like there are extra dimensions, and those dimensions are going to make it so much more satisfying. So, thank you for watching, and you take care now.